Well, hello again. Uh, it me here at the woodshed. Um, sometimes we get older and we still need to learn lessons. I uh, got a little project that we're going to do. Well, I'm going to do, and I want to video parts of it so you can see what I'm doing. A friend of mine uh, called and asked me to build a centerpiece that had a uh, napkin holder, I guess for a better deal. They call them a caddy, I guess. With a napkin in the center and salt and pepper shaker on one end. And, uh, spoon and fork on, and knives on the other. But they wanted it done in a, uh, a rustic look. And, uh, of course, rustic, I am guess I'm entitled rustic. I'm old. So anyway, I uh, kind of muddled, muddled around what to do. And uh, I have some uh, pallet wood here that are, that are uh, runners taken off of old pallets. And I use them occasionally for... Thing. I thought well, that's kind of cool. It's relatively old and it's certainly aged and you know weathered and whatnot and uh, don't need very big pieces of lumber so I'll make it out of that. Well I needed a uh, piece six and a half by six and a half square so I took two of the boards which they're only like three and a half inches or so you got a nice knot here in this one, you know, kind of, kind of, you can see the back side of it there, it's kind of got a half a knot. Kind of cool, and I thought, well, you know, I'll use that for one of the napkin holders, that'll put a little character to it, so I ran the edges through, through a, you know, joint, jointed them on my saw, just ran the edge off on the saw to give a smooth edge to, to glue to. And I did the same with two other ones, so that I have the two uprights to put in the, in the, uh, you know, side by side. Well, not that I didn't know it, uh, that's the point of my statement a little while ago. Sometimes we get old and we still need to learn or remember, and, and in this case, both. These boards were pretty damp when I brought them in. We've had uh, snow off and on here for about four or five days. Temperature got down to around a minus two at night and uh, the high in the daytime has been in the teens. And uh, I never gave it a thought about moisture being frozen in these boards. And uh, even though these were not the top boards, they were covered, but the atmosphere, the humidity was very high. And humidity and cold temperatures means frost forms. So I glued them all up, and they were they were really straight when I glued them. And then they sat here on my bench for two days. Well, over the weekend, I did this early Saturday morning. This is now Monday around noon. And if you look real close there at that board, actually the two board, the, the seam is right here where they're doweled and glued. It looks like. I could make the bow of a boat out of that thing, and probably could. So, what's the lesson here? Well, the lesson is, once these things were glued together and doweled, I should have put them on a flat surface and put clamps on them with, you know, with a couple of heavy boards, like pieces of 2x2 two two or 2x4 two across here, and just lightly clamped them together. So as they dried over the next couple of days, um, they want to look like that. You know, that's pretty curvy. <laughs> this one, not so bad. So I'm debating what to do, and I I suspect that gap in there is probably, I don't know if you can see that, let's see if I get where you can see it. That gap in there is probably somewhere around 3 sixteenths of an inch. So my plan is I'm going to dig out the, sur the, the surface planer here in a little bit and I'm going to glue these onto a piece of plywood and I'm going to run this face that will hold, uh, in other words these will be opposing to one another. So the two opposing faces I'll run through the planer. 
so that they're they're relatively flat. And they got to be smooth anyway. You know, this is really rough and weathered. So they got to be smoothed up anyway in order to accommodate that paper napkin. So I'm going to run into the surface planer, this one, and I'll have to run the other one to get make sure they're equal thicknesses. In plain, probably not all that out, but plain as much that out as I can get out by putting a flat surface on it, and that is uh, the only way I can come up with fixing the problem. So, we're going to do that, and we're going to cut the uh, sides out, uh, nothing big here. The board is the width it is, and I'm going to cut uh, two pieces for the ends, two pieces for the sides. Um, we're going to use a box joint on the end of it, a lap box joint. Then when I get to that point, I'll turn this thing back on and show you what I'm going to do with the router to create the box joint. And then we're going to glue it and brad it together and, uh, well, hopefully we have a napkin caddy. So stick around and we'll be right with you as soon as we get some, some mistakes straightened out here. So remember, wet wood, even though it's dry when it started, got wet again, you glue it up, it's best to put a clamp on it on a nice strong flat surface and let it set for a couple days and it's not going to do what mine did turn it into snowshoes alrighty so hang with me well made some changes here already in this thing I found these here uh, boards uh, I'm not sure what it is I believe it may be yellow pine uh, but I'm not 100% sure of that um, when I started dry fitting this thing together, it began to weigh a lot. Um, don't know that that would have harmed anything. However, um, I just didn't think it ought to weigh uh, five or six pounds to sit on someone's table. So anyway, um... I milled them down, I took them over and I resawed them in the bandsaw and split them down there right at a half inch now and they've been planed on one side. The other side I've left with the, the weathered finish, the outside uh, that will be visible. Um, the second reason of course is I didn't want somebody reaching in there for something and getting a splinter in their finger under their fingernail. So what I've got here is a piece of, of uh, fiberglass face plywood. I'm going to use, and I'm simply going to take these deals here and glue them up on the ends, like so. And then I'm going to take my little brad nailer and I'm going to brad it all together. And then I've got some clamps here that I'm going to clamp on the corners and square it, make rack it and make sure it's square and put a clamp on it. And we're going to set this piece aside and uh, I'm going to cut, start cutting boards for the bottom, and I'm, I'm debating what to do with the bottom. Um, I think I'll end up splitting it down, re it down to half inch like this is. Um, simply to, for weight, um, leaving the, the outside, nat you know, the natural weather, and then putting the, the finished side on the inside here. So that's where we're at and I uh, edged all these on the table saw uh, squared them through the, the rip face and, and got them got them and checked the ends here where I've got nice square ends so when I put this together it'll be a square box rather than something else but the outside will still have the weathered rustic look that the people want so that's where we're at as soon as I get this thing glued up and nailed uh, Yes, and I will be using a brad nailer. Um, I got one here I've had for a year or so. Really like the thing. So we'll get back to you when we get this done. Thank you. <coughs> well, here it is. We've got brads in it here. Glue. Clamped. And I just checked it from corner to corner. And we got it square. Um, so where we're at here now is I am going to walk away from this. And let this tight bond glue set up for about an hour and then when I come back we'll put the bottom in it which is down here this would be the top 
and then I got to remanufacture the two uprights for the napkins. And once those two things are in, we'll have this little number all done up. So hey, thanks, and I'll be back with you a bit. <coughs> well, here it is. Um, well, not quite. <laughs> um, the box part of it is done. Uh, ended up with uh, having to dig up some more material. And as you can tell, this has been cut down to half inch thick in the bottom. And I, I put the finished edges, uh, finished sides in to where somebody reaching in isn't going to get a splinter. Now, uh, I've got some more of this reclaimed stuff here. And I need to make two pieces that will go across here like dividers. So there's salt and pepper shaker on one end and knife container for knife, fork, and spoon on the other. And I'm going to take these and split them down to half inch on the band saw and run them through the planer. So that one side will be nice and smooth and finished so people don't get splinters in their fingers. And so the paper napkins uh, come in and out there real easy. And all this is is glued and clamped and bratted. And, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, the glue should hold it as far as uh, strength is concerned. It's tight bond and it should hold till the cows come home. So, as soon as I get. Uh, um, some stuff ripped up here, uh, run through the bandsaw, get a cut to thickness, we'll piece together the boards to make the divider for the napkins and the salt and pepper shaker. And uh, when we get that done, we'll be back and we'll show you what we got left. Well, here we are again. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of Murphy's Law. Uh, anything that can go wrong will go wrong and uh, every so often you get one of these really simple straightforward everything's right angle square nothing should be a hang up okay and in the project part it really isn't the problem is sometimes uh, at least speaking for myself, I tend to outthink myself. So in my bit of wisdom, <clears throat> I, uh, as you saw earlier in the video here, that I decided to use uh, to reclaim wood to build this thing because they wanted uh, they wanted a rustic look and they wanted it to uh, appear uh, old. And uh, I guess that means rustic. But anyway, they, they, that's what they do. That's what they like. That's, that's the thing that they like things to look like. So, uh, rather than build it out of newer stock and, you know, age it either chemically or uh, with different dyes, paints, whatever, in my wisdom, I decided I would use reclaimed lumber. Well, earlier I showed you this stuff was probably yellow pine, which I think it probably is. But it's off of a, a very old pallet. I don't know how old the pallet was before I got it. I've had it probably three years. And it's been outside. I mean, it's not anything I would worry too much about storing. So when I got as far as I did yesterday with building the uprights to construct the, the napkin holder part of this uh, little table, kitchen table caddy, um, I came across a bit of revelation. Um, in the process of that wood being old and being wet and dry and wet and dry, and um, if we were going to use it on a lathe, they'd call it spalted. Well, it start, the wood starts to break down. The wood breaks down with weather fairly quickly. And once I got those boards assembled, or the pieces assembled out of bits and pieces of reclaimed pallet wood, 
to make my dividers, they were more than flexible. Uh, structural strength was uh, nominal, let's put it that way. And my concern was that somebody would reach down and grab over the two pieces that make the, you know, the two pieces stand up this way. And my concern was somebody would reach down and grab it this way and squeeze on them to pick that up to move it, and they would break. So my first thought was, rather than run them cross grain, which would have been, you know, lined up with the ends, two ends of the, of the rest of the caddy, to stand them upright. Well, virtually the same thing. They're still kind of flimsy in the middle, and I didn't want to leave them three-quarter because then it put the weight back in the box. Long story is, I scrapped them. And I started over. And I did not film any of it or, or video any of it. No real reason. I didn't. I just didn't. Um, kind of got behind with the project. The guy wanted to pick it up on the weekend. And, and tomorrow's Friday, so I wasn't done. And da 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 da. So I didn't bother to turn the camera on. So I'm here to tell you mistakes happen. They just do. So you got to figure out what to do. Well, what I did, I went and got a chunk of Douglas fir 2x4 and I ripped it down to a little over half, ran it through the planer, made some new uh, half inch material, and built the napkin dividers out of it. Same thing that I showed you in the video with the dowels. Doweled it together, doweled it together, and I did use it use the grain horizontally uh, like I'd originally planned and I got the thing done and uh, I'll show you the finished product here and uh, the, the other issue I faced then is I had some old weathered wood and some new not weathered wood and da 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 so what I ended up doing is um, I went, did a, went through a thing they call ebonizing which is really nothing more than a, a chemical stain or chemical coloring of wood. I ebonized it and then sanding sealed it and then put a, a wipe on walnut stain and and it all came out pretty much the same. I mean it all came out looking the same so we're okay there but it did it did lengthen the project by probably four or five hours which is no big thing because that's what I was doing but uh I guess the thing to take away from all this is uh, we can we can only do what our skill levels will let us do and uh, when we get to where we can't do anymore that's when we begin to learn and unfortunately we learn a large portion of what we know from mistake so my mistake was I should not have used reclaimed wood in a place where I thought there would probably be stress which I'm sure there will be and secondly um, we need to be alert enough of the fact of these things happening before we get into it, which I didn't do. I didn't pre-think it. I just saw it as a quick little in and out project, which it still is. It still was. It's still a good thing, and I'd do it again tomorrow, but I would not. The box probably would be reclaimed again, but I wouldn't even, wouldn't even begin to make the centerpieces out of, out of the reclaimed wood. So, Remember, you only get a product as good as the material building it out of, no matter what your skill level. So I'll show you what I've got. The box is done. I'm going to put a felt, uh, glue a felt pad on the bottom so it doesn't scratch tabletop. And uh, that's it. It's going out the door and, and it's done. Pro good project. Uh, a lot of fun to build. Would build another one now, but don't have to. <laughs> so here is the the finished deal. And it came out okay. I didn't. I didn't worry about. Uh, you can see the bottom is the way it originally was. There's nothing. I didn't do anything to the bottom yet. I plan on putting the felt on there, and that'll be the end of that story. But the rest of it came out as you see here, and it all turned out to be a pretty matching deal. 
some of the wood because of the way it began to break down from weather it took the stain and the ebonizing a little differently but it is done and uh, these little dividers here are glued in the bottom and on the sides and they're brad nailed down the side and across the bottoms and they are they are actually stout enough because of being made out of newer lumber that they don't flex when you grab them so I'm happy with the way it turned out. Uh, wish I'd have been smart enough to see it coming with the reclaimed lumber. I will use reclaimed stuff on things like this wherever and whenever practical and possible. But when you have doubts on something like this, you need to go a different route. And that was my error. And there you are, finished. Didn't take anything but a little saw work, a little bit of work on a planer, and uh, some glue and some brads and and uh, it is finished and the gentleman's coming to get it probably tomorrow or Sunday so um, that's it so until we get something else going we will see you and uh, remember you gotta work smart and you gotta work safe um, if you don't work smart, you're going to be doing it a lot of times. If you don't work safe, you may not be doing it next day. So be careful. Take care.